Loud condemnation trail lawmakers' rejection of women bills during voting for the 1999 Constitution Amendment. On the program today, we will bring you the anger. To tell you how rooted the hatred, the rejection is. Frustration. They all gave us the promise that they will support us in that aspect, but unfortunately they didn't. And disappointment of female lawmakers. For a presiding officer to sponsor a bill, I do not know anything that will kill that bill because he's our boss. This is the Hall of Chambers on TVC News. I am Tijesu Adiri. Enkiruka Unyejocha is a fourth time member of the National Assembly, having been first elected in 2007. Today, she's an angry woman. Angry because her efforts and those of others with like minds towards increasing the nation's ranking on the gender ladder have been punctured. Nigeria ranks 184 out of 187 countries in the number of women in parliament worldwide. The country has the lowest number of female legislators in the West African region and is lumped with Eritrea and Somalia in the bottom three. This is injuring Nigeria in a number of ways. And it is in addressing this that she was the brain behind a bill seeking additional seats for women as a way of increasing their stake in governance. The bill was co-sponsored by the Speaker and over 100 members of the House. But upon voting, even with the presence of the wife of the Vice President, only 81 members voted in support and 208 were against it. She is still at a loss as to how and why the bill suffered rejection. The flaws of Senate. And to say the least, I'm very disappointed. Disappointed not because people shut down bill, but I'm disappointed because the bill that was shut down have taken this country backwards. But she is not deterred. The deputy chief whip says women and the he for she men are returning to the drawing board. We need political will. We need serious political will. Because if we have political will, we don't need legislation to do that 5% affirmative action. A message to the women that have come to occupy the National Assembly is to keep hope alive. Nigerian women, you should not be deterred. It is not over until it's over. We are not going to shut down the government. We are not going to cause chaos. And we wouldn't want people to hijack the peaceful process. That's why I've come here to say even though we are inside, but we are with you. In Kiruka, New Georgia's bill, along with the ones seeking 35% affirmative action for women and 20% in appointive offices, were roundly rejected by the two chambers of the National Assembly. There are high hopes that the rejected bills will be represented at the next phase of consideration and will be lucky to receive the nod of the lawmakers. Joining us on the program to put issues in perspective is Senator Lillian Equinife, representing the people of Anambra Central Senatorial District. Thank you for joining us on the Hall of Chambers. It's been a long time coming with the Constitution Amendment process and with what has happened during the voting process of the 68 bills. Would you say all the decisions made captures the mind of Nigerians? In some areas, yes. In some areas, no. In the area of uh, women, um, most of the members voted against it. And if you recall, that 35% affirmative action has been coming up for the past three sessions of the National Assembly. I don't even know what the reason is all about, especially this uh, section 35, where we are craving for creation of additional seats for women. That one is not injurious to anyone. Uh, we know that that one, of course, will assist in the democratic uh, dispensation in this country. I don't know the reason why they voted it down. We lobbied the members, we lobbied the leadership of National Assembly. We went to them individually and collectively and all gave us the promise that they would support us in that aspect. But unfortunately, they didn't. Then the Section 37 that talked about 35% you know, affirmative action, they voted against it. The Section 68 that also recommended 10% of uh, women in all appointive positions also turned that one down. So I wonder exactly what they want. What went through your mind when you watched your colleagues vote against all the female bills in the amendment of the Constitution? 
You know, you you really don't know who actually voted who. So we are we are, we are asking the Senate President to release the voting pattern. Let us know who voted for what. It is very important we know those that voted against that bill. Not only the bill to see how everyone voted. What went wrong? Could it be insufficient advocacy by women groups and poor sensitization of lawmakers on the need to support these bills? I think there was advocacy, uh, you know, we, we campaigned, we lobbied in the area when we were supposed to lobby. And the wife of the president came and they lobbied the members. The wife of this vice president also came. But now that they, it, it, we couldn't pass it, it's left for wife of the president to make it up by lobbying the husband to put more women in appointive positions. We can use appointive positions to strengthen the capacity of the women while we keep trying. I believe one day it will work because most of those male you know, senators and House of Reps members, they have girls, they have wives, they have daughters, they have sisters. And I believe that many of them are praying for their children, especially their girls, to you know, be in a good position. So I don't see reason why they should turn down those bills, especially when the bill is not injurious to them. How many years back do you think this has set Nigeria and how will the world perceive a country that unanimously voted against adequate recognition of women in its constitution? They will see Nigeria as a country that is quite insensitive to gender. You know, uh, there's, uh, all over the world, there's this clamor for gen closing up of gender parity all over. In most of the African countries, they have topped up the game when it comes to women representation, both in elective position and appointive positions. And more women are now picking up challenges all over. You can imagine America today has a vice president that is a lady, and some other countries have f female presidents. So I don't see why Nigeria cannot you know, um, emulate some of these countries that have topped up their games on women. And looking at the women that have been given opportunities in this country, they have shown that the women have the capacity to hold any position. Look at Okojiwala today. Look at uh, the, the Minister of Finance in Nigeria. Look at the Minister of State, uh, in, um, uh, Minister of State in uh, Trade and Commerce. You know, look at so many other women in positions and see how well they're doing. So I don't see reason why women cannot be given such opportunity. For me, uh, like you talked to the Senate President yesterday, we, we need to represent this bill back. Let's see what we can do. I see maybe you can lobby more and get the leadership of the National Assembly, get their commitment. I think the, the wife of the President and... Um, wife of the vice president and the wives of the governors these members come from different states let the wives of the governors engage the lawmakers from their states and start the lobby from their respective states and see that the positions of the women are not threatening their position so if we lobby from states you know of course that will make it easier for us to achieve that here but a lot of these male folks believe that empowering the women would give them the right to challenge the men especially in the home do you agree with this thought? I don't think so. I, I for once, I have, I have a husband, I have my family, and my family is intact, and I have absolute respect and regards for my husband. I haven't seen where my position has affected my home. I'm still a wife, I'm still a mother, and I am not wanting in, in any of those, my, I'm not wanted in any of those positions. So when they, you give women positions and give them opportunities, that will not make them to deviate from their normal role of being a mother and being a wife. I don't think so. I don't even think, I don't even know why they feel so insecure in having women in, in certain positions. I don't think so. Most of the women here all have our families together, our families intact, and still have absolute respect. You know, it is, it is normal that a woman is under a man at home, and that's what it is. That your senator does not make you superior or bigger or higher than your husband. No, that is the, that's not our culture. So no matter what we get outside as politicians, we'll still have to go back to our normal tradition, our normal norm, our normal culture, and the way of uh, husband and wife. What next after this kind of rejection, and how should women keep hopes alive? 
The only way we can keep hope is to support ourselves. We have the numerical strength. We have the numerical strength. If we use the, the numerical strength that we have, we can take up all the positions. Women have to believe in themselves. They need to love themselves. They need to support each other. Without supporting each other, even when you have that bill in place, even who will also be there, you know. So we need to, this is time we need to show ourselves love, you know, be able to, you know, support ourselves knowing that uh, power is not dashed it's not served a la carta you have to go and fight for it you know and uh, we'll go. when you go to pulling units you see that you have about 80 percent of the women and 20 percent of the men lined up to vote so why can't they vote for women what word do you have for nigeria women even as we are gearing towards another general elections in 2023 my word to nigerian women is to believe in themselves love themselves for some of them that have interest in politics you have to come out to go and struggle it out with the men knowing that no man will leave the field because a woman wants to go to that office it is a competition and being a competition anybody can compete once you are qualified by the constitutional provision whether you're a man or a woman is equal opportunity you have to go and fight for it. But in fighting, you have to weigh your fight. You have to weigh the options. You have to mobilize those that can, you know, support you in that election. The world is getting ready to celebrate the International Women's Day in a few days. What is your message as a female legislator? My message to them is that for some of us that are in advantage positions should help others. We should reach out to people, we should mentor younger ones, should let them know that they have the key to unlock the door. We also have joining us a female lawmaker from the Green Chamber, Honorable Omaumi Olubumi Ogunlola, representing Ijero Ekiti West, F from Federal Constituency of Ekiti State. It's good to have you on the program. Thank you very much. Thank you. What do you make of your colleagues' rejection of all gender-related bills, including that seeking special seats for women? We all know the situation is an unfortunate one that affects uh, more than half of the population of the nation because it has to do with um, the female folks. And it's really unfortunate there is a verse of the Bible that says, who, who made you a judge over us? Um, the men, because to me, I'm seeing it as um, the issue that is in between the men and the, and the women, or the male and the female counterparts. If not, uh, I believe um, the male honorable members, they want to give the female members the grace of having uh, a, let me say, a modicum of uh, representation. It is not as if uh, they are asking for much or more than what anybody should be able to give. And to tell you how rooted the hatred, the rejection is, it is not limited only to allotment of slots or portion of a seat to honorable members. It also goes to the root of citizenship. Well, over 100 of your colleagues, including you, co-sponsored the bill, yet we saw far less than that figure vote in its support. And that's the hypocrisy of our people. The, the hypo, hypocritical situation that we find ourselves. You can be something outwardly, but inwardly you are another thing. When you can get caught up, you, 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 you portray yourself to be something, whereas you are another thing. Maybe, and that the more reason why you don't just put people's name to come and co-sponsor any bill. Because something they don't have conviction about, Somebody, something they don't believe in, you're asking them to come and co-sponsor. If we are, if they should, because the point is we all voted. Let let them take off the 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 uh, the veil, and let's see those 
that voted and those that voted for and against. Then you will see that even some of this, I want to believe that is 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 not limited to region or to the regional uh, uh, zones. We have some people that are from the other side that we feel they are not going to vote for us or they did not vote and they voted. And we have some people that we believe normally these people should vote. They did not vote because they feel threatened. Somebody was telling me, so I should vote for women so that they can come and take my position. And I told them, it is what you fear most that will happen to you. Because it is these women that you feel they cannot take, these are the women that will take it from you. Why did the request for additional seats have to fail when the 469 seats are intact for both men and women to vie for? See, let me tell you, the Bible says my people perish for lack of knowledge. Most of them, they, they don't really understand this thing. You don't get it. They believe when they vote for them, they are coming to displace them. And how many seats are we asking for? How many seats? Let me tell you something. I'm not even talking about seats now. Let's put that aside. That, okay, they said, okay, what happened to party positions? That they said, okay, give to women. So it is not about, what I'm saying is, is that it is not about, it is the issue between man and woman. It is that, it's about the sex. Forget it. It's about the gender. It is not about, they want to take my, because what happened to positions of the party? What happened to citizenship? Uh, situ um, uh, um, um, status. What happened to it, it is not limited. Okay, they are even saying ministerial nominees and commissioner. Ah, to me, it goes beyond the issue of of uh, uh, of uh, of a uh, uh, slot. And not even the support given by the wives of the president and the vice president could sway the votes in the favor of the women. Let, let me tell you something. When it comes to a man, they see every other woman as the same. Any man at all. Any man, they see all women, regardless of their status, regardless of uh, their qualification or what they are. Like you said, we have the president and the wife of the president coming to the National Assembly. It's not as if they come here often. It's not as if that is the way they come. The Bible says we should give honor to whom honor is due. And the reason why they come, they came, is just to solidarize with the women. To say, okay, oh, we are here. I want to see that as a, at, the, at, at the side of humility of, uh, on their own side. Coming down to say, please, we want you to help us. And they threw the thing at their faces that you can go anywhere, we are not going to do it. It tells you the decadence that we have in our nation. Then it tells you how bankrupt we are, morally. Because we are not really, I'm telling you, there is no respect, there is no honor. We are supposed to be honorable people. We are supposed to behave as honorable people. And you give honor to whom honor is due. It takes somebody who is honorable to honor another person. I won't say it more than that. Is it about women not doing enough lobbying and advocacy? No. See, I happen to be uh, a member of Constitutional Conference. And all the women, all the female members were co-opted into the committee. And any time we are having a meeting, we always tell ourselves we should be present so that we can speak to them. Let me tell you something. The first day that bill came to the floor, from inception of that, of the presentation of the bill, they have been saying it, that we are going to kill this bill. Forget it. So it's a premeditated thing. It is not about a lobbying or no lobbying. And let me tell you something. We are just 12 here among 360. Or except they want to define or break it down, the kind of lobbying they are looking for. No, let them tell us. Because it depends. If it is lobbying by mouth and we have gone round telling you, please, help us. We have done that. Let them now tell us the kind of lobbying they are looking for. Because with Nigerian men, there are something else. Let us know what they want. Do you believe culture and religion played a key role in this case? Well, as far as I'm concerned, I want to 
I'm a Christian. And um, I know the word of God gives a woman the leverage to be whatsoever she wants to be. After all, which I know, the other side of the religion too, they believe God created man and woman. Even though their injunction says they can marry four, from the beginning, he created just one one. And that's my own conviction. My own beliefs and my conviction is that I can be anything I want to be with the grace of God. If God has endowed me, if, God, if I've been able, with the grace of God, to be able to get the little education that I have, this thing goes beyond this job. Let me tell you something. When people, like the Bible or the Quran, anything you want to do, you always have a way or a place that you can hide under. It is normal. It, it, even the law. If you want to justify your action, you always get, get it there. There are precedents that you can get. You don't get it. So let's leave the issue of religion. And then, um, did their religion tell them to come to the National Assembly? No. Is there anywhere in the Bible or the Quran that says go to the National Assembly? There is National Assembly in the Quran or in the Bible. Is there anything like that? So why are they hiding under religion? How does Nigeria explain the fact that 27 years after the Beijing conference, we are nowhere near 35% affirmative action? Well, I, I, I want to say, firstly, our perception. One, then there is no awareness. Even national orientation agencies, I don't think they are, I don't think they are, they are still in existence. I don't know. Even if they are, they are just toothless bulldog. They are not doing anything. There is no awareness. Nothing. I don't know. We are in a in a. I don't want to say we are in a stage of a stalemate. I don't want to. I don't want to put it like, like that that way. But in in life, according to what me I believe, there is always season and time. We are in 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 a in a season, and this time will surely pass by the grace of God. And. We will look back and say, okay, there was a time, something like this. I believe we are, we are by the grace of God, there will be a new dawn for Nigeria. Uh, we are crawling. I believe one day we'll start maybe uh, trying to, because normally it's like we are, not really making, we are not really making any progress. We are not making any progress. If we are stagnated, it's even better. It's like we are retrogressing. And which is not good for the nation. Look at many African countries that are now, we are, we are just saying we are first. We, it is by population that we are, we, are, we are laying claim to be giant of, giant by population. They are breeding and giving one woman, giving birth to 2015. That's where we are taking the lead. While we are some other countries, they are, they are uh, trying to curtail the way they do things. And they are doing it in a civilized way. Well, what are we saying? We are deceiving ourselves. And what is next for the rejected bills? They are, they are, they are not yet dead. Because they are still, it's still ongoing. It will still go through uh, the, the two-thirds of the state who have to pass it to law. We are hoping and believing and praying that something good will come out of it. And afterward, we'll be able to sit down and uh, try and uh, juggle things and see how it goes. And if not, Aluta continue. So that is it. We are not going to. You, it is. It is not. It is not over until it is over. We will we'll, we'll keep on shouting it. We will keep on conversing it. And the point is, to me, I believe this is the time. It is. It is high time that women should come together. Let us speak with one voice. Let us come together. There's, there's this movie, um, Women on Strike. Let's start from somewhere. Let somebody take the lead and let the women, let us show them that women, we have a place in creation, not only in Nigeria. We have, we, have, we have women. God created us for a purpose and nobody will look down on me or will say I am, I am, I am, I am not relevant. Because he that created them from the beginning, created man and woman. If I don't have a place, he wouldn't have created me. So why would any man tell me and tell me that I am nothing? Then he is nothing. 
So that is it. Should there be allotted seats for women, the youth will also rise to make demands. Are they not entitled to it? Is it, is it the adult men or the men that are entitled to it? What are you saying? Are they not part of the society? Or are, are they not part of uh, the nation? Are they not contributing that? What, what are we saying? If they have the qualification, why, why won't they do it? Don't you have better women, better youth than some of us here? What are you saying? Is it about coming and sitting down and be eating uh, this thing? Eh? That they will ask. Why would they ask? Is it not their right? Don't they have right to, to, to govern and be governed? Don't they have right to present themselves for vote and be voted for? What are we saying? Many have also argued about the cost implication of increased seats in the parliament at the time there are calls for a unicameral legislature. Which cost implication? I better leave that story. <laughs> I, I've told, you see, we have a way of placating people, telling people uh, stories which normally they are not, just to suit ourselves or to make a kind of cover or a coverage for what we really, just a kind of subterfuge. You are saying one thing, but the meaning is another thing to deceive the people. It is not, which causes implications. Don't we know how money is being wasted in this nation? That is all on our program this week. You can watch a repeat broadcast on Sunday morning. You can also see this episode again on TVC News' YouTube channel. Do not forget to subscribe, like, and share. I am TJ Suadoyi. I stand for gender equality, and I stand against gender-based violence. Break the bias.